Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries. Um, I'm Regan Ray. Um, I'm a, a boxer, owner, lover, breeder, and um, I'm a herding judge, and I'm a, a, a big advocate of people doing something with their boxer. As a child, I had a boxer growing up. Um, I don't remember that boxer, but I heard so many stories about it growing up that it had to be the breed that I chose as an adult. And once I lived with one, that was it. I had a really smart boxer puppy, and I wanted to do sports with her, but I didn't really know what to do, and I tried all kinds of things. I did agility and obedience, I tried lure coursing, um, just anything that would get me out doing something with her. And I, one of the trainers that I worked with suggested that I try herding and I really had no idea what that meant. Um, and I kept contacting Terry Parrish and eventually she said, okay, come on, bring, bring her on out here, we'll throw her in with some sheep and see what happens. And she put her in with the sheep and my husband and I watched, had no idea what she was doing, but Terry was very excited about it. So she said, come on out, and let's see what this boxer can do. And that was just the beginning. They weren't approved to compete in any uh, venues at that point. So I was just training just for fun. And then as time went on and she had an outrun and she was able to do these things, walking up on the sheep, moving them away from me, keeping herself under control, anticipating what I wanted, um, it started to look like I had to compete with this dog. And little by little, got in touch with the American Boxer Club, American Kennel Club, wrote a petition, which Terry helped me with and several other of the trainers around here. And we got the boxer approved. The American Boxer Club is, um, they're supportive of agility and obedience, but really hadn't thought about the boxer in some of the, the ways it was used in the past. And even though they were considered a drover's dog, and originally it was the Munich Butchers Club that you know, wrote the first standard for the breed, um, there was an idea that they had worked on cattle, but really they were thought of as a guard dog. They'd been the first dogs used in war, um, carrying message, messages. So the idea of them working stock, even though they'd been a hunting breed, they'd worked in the hunt, they were a catch breed. So they were sent out, they had the flushing dogs, and then they had the dogs that held the prey down for the hunter to come. Um, we knew that they were able to move animals around, but it wasn't clear what they'd done in the past in terms of managing stock. And that's really true of most breeds. The, the most history that we have on animals moving stock is the Border Collie, of course. The real herding breeds um, have a, a natural understanding of their pressure around stock. And likely boxers, or the precursor to the boxer, um, the bull and baser, the hunting ancestors of the boxer may have moved stock around, but not like a Border Collie. There's, there isn't that finesse and style and beauty and that uh, ability to sense how their pressure affects the stock, except in some individuals. So we're finding that some boxers are very able to learn how their pressure affects the stock and then they can help you do a job because they're an all-purpose breed. So they were used on farms, they were used for chores. We just don't really know what and in what capacity. Just that they're a very biddable breed and once they learn how to do something with you, they want to do it. That's probably the biggest attribute of the boxer is it wants to be with you and it wants to please you and do things for you. And they're very smart and quick to train up. So it's, it makes them really wonderful dogs to do any kind of sport with because they train so quickly and you can go out and have fun kind of right away. <laughs> in the, the courses that are designed in AKC and American Herding Breed Association really are for many, many breeds to be able to compete. And I think a better word for it is exhibit. You're able to train your dog to do this um, activity with you and then exhibit your relationship. So I was drawn to this. <laughs> I get teary-eyed about it because it's, it's, um, 
It's kind of profound. Your dog is working so far away from you and you're with a, an entirely other species. And the working dogs, all of them, have to put their prey drive aside in order to do a job with you. Bring sheep to you, move them through obstacles, the courses between AKC and the American Herding Breed Association are designed to exhibit that relationship and that ability to move stock um, calmly and thoughtfully. It's all about the careful management of livestock. Um, so the Border Collie has its own organization. They of course compete in all of these and often win everything because that's the breed. That's the one to do that with. Um, uh, most ranchers are going to choose the Border Collie, right? But it doesn't mean you can't go out and have fun and do things with these wonderful working dogs that want to do a job with you. And this is just, we have a couple of venues in which to exhibit their ability to do a job with you. A hard job. <laughs> a job that requires some intelligence and self-control, um, the ability to wait and listen, to work away from you, to make decisions once they see. It's amazing to me that in some of the more advanced herding, uh, courses that they dogs can pattern train of course but the sheep are always going to do something different so you can never anticipate what any group of two three four twenty sheep are going to do and your dog has to not only respond to your commands but it has to think about what your intentions are at the highest level I do love it though I mean I I just I couldn't believe what my, my first dog, she's now passed, what she was able to do and how she was able to figure things out. And um, I mean, there were times when there were other dogs working in the field at lessons and things, and they'd lose their sheep and they'd come running past. And, and my, you know, Pip was her name. Pip would just put herself into a down immediately. Those weren't her sheep. This wasn't her job. She was letting the other dog work things I didn't command her to do, but after many, many years of working around stock, she just knew. Um, that's a pretty heady thing. <laughs> that's a pretty wonderful relationship to have with a dog or to see them get to that level of thought. Um, so I think people who get involved in herding appreciate that. They see how much the dog has to think. In the arena courses, there's a, a lot of obedience herding that you can do. Um, and have a great time and, and never train that hard or never become that level of trainer and still have a great time. And a lot of people do that, and most people do that. Um, and then you get you know to that level where you wanna seek out a championship and, and really exhibit the things your dog can do and you're gonna have to do this course a lot and you're gonna have to compete against the Border Collies and you're gonna have to get first places against a lot of Border Collies. In, in the American Kennel Club, you have to have a major, which means there's some competition. There have to be the numbers there and boxers have done it. So I have along the same line, um, I bred Pip and I, I got Fred, she's now seven and a half, the brindle boxer that, that um, I was showing you today. She has her advanced titles in the American Kennel Club, she has intermediate titles in American Herding Breed Association and we're starting on her advanced titles. Um, she has titles out in the field on B course, uh, which is considered the Border Collie course with the big outruns and it's so much fun to exhibit her doing that and keeping it under control. Um, and uh, there, there are other venues that the, there's something called the United States Border Collie Handlers Association that really you only see Border Collies in and her grandmother Pip competed in that, exhibited I should say, a few times and qualified and, and um, that was a pretty amazing thing to be out there with only collies in this one little boxer. Um, so that was, was Pip and she had two championships and she also had a tracking championship. Um, I didn't get into IPO or they now call it IGP um, Schutzen until Fred, the, the brindle female that I have now. So she's seven and a half and has her IGP two. So I've gone through two um, levels of that with her. And the herding is something we started with first. It was the sport I knew the best. Um, and she also has a tracking championship in the American Kennel Club. Um, and then I bred her and I have Winston. Her son is 16 months now and is starting to get into the big arena and get a little control of himself and understand how to move sheep and how to, how to read them a little bit. Well, he doesn't read them yet, <laughs> but he's getting there. Um, he's certainly interested in them. 
and uh, I plan to go through the, the levels of herding with him as well and he's um, got the first two levels in the American Kennel Club of tracking titles as well and we're starting him in IGP. He's been working on that for a little bit too. We'll probably trial him in about a year. When I first got involved with dog sports, I I wanted to have a relationship with this really smart breed. I just thought they were fantastic. I loved how goofy they were. I loved how they put all that aside and were able to become very serious when they saw something was important to you. If you live with a boxer, you see them do the most amazing things, um, really, really smart things. <laughs> I had a, a, a boxer that, um, okay, so I have a glass of water next to my bed and uh, I'm thirsty, I'm drinking the water and my boxer comes in and she looks at the glass of water and she runs to the bedroom door and then she comes back and looks at me and looks at the glass of water, runs to the bedroom door. Okay, all right, so I get up and I follow her down the hallway and then she goes and stands over her water bowl, which is empty. That's a boxer. <laughs> uh, I could tell you lots of crazy stories like that, but um, I've always loved the breed and I wanted to do something with them that showed this off um, and have this relationship for other people to see. So when I got involved in herding, um, as time went by and I saw the boxer could do a little of this and a little of that, and gosh, we might get through the first level, and oh my goodness, and um, getting out there and exhibiting this wonderful working dog and the things that they're able to do. Uh, herding is a, is a difficult job, it's hard to train, it's um, very challenging to exhibit um, a good herding run at the highest levels, and boxers can do it. Strangely enough, herding became the thing that made people think, oh, gosh, if they can do what the Border Collies do, they're pretty smart. And I think it kind of got into people's ego and into their hearts, that, I'm going to do that too. And it's been pretty wonderful to be a part of that. I want to support anything that keeps the breed's intelligence, um, their athleticism, their desire to do something with you alive.